moving on from that, I thought I would talk briefly about Man United beating Liverpool at home. Obviously, with it being a derby, it was an amazing result. Let's put that out there and not kind of, you know, um, be too negative about it. So definitely it being a derby with it coming the day, with it coming with it being the game after the first two losses of the Premier League against Brighton and Brentford it was obviously a very welcome result and performance. I say even performance before the result. I think if we, even if we drew this game, I still think it would have been a great thing to kind of look back on. Uh, but I think any fan, I think most fans with common sense, no, no, I think most fans who are honest and most fans who are not blinkered, I don't think we ever expected to see this level of performance or a result from this team given how poorly we played against Brighton and Brentford. Because so, you could easily say the Brighton game, we could were played off the park. Brentford game, maybe not so much, but still Brentford probably could have scored more goals, but we didn't deserve to win either of those matches. And the fact that we were able to turn it around and perform to this level, even against a weakened Liverpool side, a Liverpool side is clearly lacking in some big names and missing big characters. Darwin Nunes wasn't playing because of the suspension. Thiago was um, injured, I'm pretty sure. So they're missing some key characters. They just lost Marnie, haven't really replaced him too tough in terms of an out-and-out player that they can use there. So there was a lot of things going wrong for them in that respect so and they haven't started the season well either but the performance is very encouraging it clearly showed that these players do have it in them to work and to hustle and to run around um, you saw a lot of players at the end of the game really out of their on their feet basically tired and knackered because they've had had to work this hard ever under any kind of managerial you know under any manager for a sustained period which is says a lot about the players to be honest but I would ear on the side of caution because I think the majority of these players are still the same bottle jobs that got into the position that we're in at the moment. They're still the same players who essentially got loads of managers fired before Ten Hag and they're still the same players but for the most part have taken it for granted that they play for such a great club it's because they've basically been able because they basically have no accountability under the Glazer ownership so that essentially has breeded a really toxic environment where the players are weirdly in control of such a great club and essentially take the piss out of the fans by putting in some really diabolical performances but this performance against Liverpool let's be honest was decent it was pretty decent I thought the lineup was pretty solid and 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 and, and and refreshing um, Eric Ten Hag did end up dropping a few players off the back of that Brentford game understandably because it was so poor but I don't think anyone expected him to draw Harry Maguire I think Harry Maguire being the captain and you know with Eric Ten Hag saying a lot of positive things about him and essentially saying you know he's the captain for me now I'm not going to decide on anything as long as he plays well he's going to play whatever right but we just got the feeling that he was being overly protective of, of Harry Maguire and we didn't really think that he would get dropped because of the English bias and all this sort of nonsense that goes on around his name but he obviously pulled up some pretty stinky performances and with the way that Maynard wants to play he's probably not that well suited to Ten Hag system anyway in general so regardless of what he done prior to Ten Hag's appointment Harry Maguire is probably unlucky because he's not the kind of profile defender that an Eric Ten Hag would like in the first place which might kind of explain why he decided to go for Alessandro Martinez which may be not true he probably would have bought him anyway but still the the, the kind of um, the rush to kind of bring in a defender straight away and if I remember but correctly during the summer transfer window we were linked with Julian Timber and I think he might have been the first player we were linked with so clearly there was a he identified the defence as definitely a weak point then he also dropped Luke Shaw a player that I've been very much against having a United team for a very long time. I think his time has been and gone for a while, but as per usual, a lot of you English players that are associated with Man United, they just get to claim a paycheck and, you know, hang around forever and ever. We still have flipping Phil Jones at the club, for goodness sake. So I think the likes of Harry Maguire and Phil and Luke Jones, Luke, Harry Maguire and Luke Jones, <laughs> Harry Maguire and Luke Shaw will be able to collect a check for much longer, but it was definitely refreshing to see them out of the team. And the difference that Lissandra Martinez and Malasia brought to the team the energy, the aggression, the tenacity was incredible in the back line. You could definitely see that they're a step above um, in quality with the likes of um, Maguire and Flippin' Shaw. Obviously, Martinez probably didn't replace Maguire. I think Varane did, and Varane played really well too. And if anything, they probably complement each other better, Varane and Martinez, because Martinez is very scrappy. He does like to get tight to, to, to attackers. He does like to slide. He does like to, he does like to basically have a bit of a battle and engage his defenders. Oh, sorry, the attackers, whereas you know, Varane is more 
in the Rio Ferdinand sort of mode. He's more classy. He likes to nip in and kind of take the ball away from the players and whatnot. So I do think that kind of helped. And of course, the midfield kind of worked as well. For Scott, Scott Matama, they played pretty well. Ericsson did his job okay. Bruno Fernandes was running around a headless chicken, but he did pretty decent. And the rest was what it was, in it? The goal from Sancho was obviously very well taken. I loved seeing that. I thought Elanga played really well for the first 20 minutes or so. Rashford did okay. Not that amazing. But again, I think the team we were playing against was very weak and the team was playing against was very devoid of confidence and I think it was probably set up for us to kind of perform in this way and if anything the reason why I wouldn't get too giddy on it is because these players have been bottle jobs for a while they give us all this false hope and then they go and lose the next game to you know a pretty mediocre side so I'm not going to go too excited about this but it was a somewhat pleasing performance to see from our players so definitely pleased to see that going forward and of course all the flipping um all the salt from Jurgen Klopp at the end saying that, he, that his team deserved to win was also kind of nice to see. But apart from that, I wasn't that bothered about the game, to be honest, because I think the bigger picture is to get rid of the Glazers and the bigger picture is to kind of look at how we kind of try to evolve and develop over the next few years to kind of get us back to where we should be. But at the moment with the Glazer ownership, if we continue going the same way we are now, nothing's really going to change.